It's recently brought devastating floods to parts of Japan, super typhoons to Taiwan, and chaos to communities the other side of the world in Brazil who are hit by storms and flash floods. So what am I talking about? El Nino. And this time round, it could be the strongest in decades. Every few years at the equator in the Pacific, the ocean surface becomes warmer, wind patterns change their normal behavior, and the weather is dramatically altered. El Nino is born, and the knock-on effects can sometimes be felt worldwide. We could see uh, an increase in food prices, and typically in response to an El Nino event, we see food prices increase by about five to 10%, particularly for staple crops like coffee, rice, sugar, and cocoa. And that's because El Nino causes floods and droughts in, in many tropical regions where these crops are grown. So what could this strong El Nino mean around the world? Droughts are triggered in places such as Australia. Already they've seen huge bushfires and heat waves this year. Western Australia, the Northern Territory, and parts of New South Wales and Victoria saw temperatures near or above 40 degrees Celsius this summer. And Western Australia in particular had one of its worst seasons for bushfires. Elsewhere, the opposite has happened. Droughts have been quenched by rainstorms and floods. The Atacana Desert in Chile normally is one of the driest places on Earth, getting around a centimetre of rain a year. Not this year. They saw the heaviest rainfall in 80 years. In the United States, in the West, they've had a huge number of wildfires. And in California, they're actually relying on El Nino to bring much-needed drought relief. But as in 1997, it could well bring floods and landslides and mayhem too. If we jump over to the Pacific, during an El Nino, typhoons are likely to be more frequent and more powerful than normal. And this year, we've seen just that. The warmer ocean waters, which occur during an El Nino, give an extra boost to the storms and make them more likely to form in the first place. So the threat of typhoons striking Asia-Pacific coasts is extra high this season. And in Europe, sometimes winters end up much colder and drier and can last well into spring. This was 2010 when the El Nino played a part in bringing huge amounts of snow to the UK. One thing's for sure, El Nino never behaves in the same way twice. And other factors in the environment will also play their part. And we'll be watching it every step of the way. Tomasz Schaffernacker, BBC News.